You're watching Fugitive Red Eye, and welcome to another episode of Red Eye Responds. This one was recommended to me in the comments of the last episode, uh, because it was a similar topic. So last time I talked about Phantom Strider's taste in cartoons, right? Well, now we're going to be watching this guy's taste in cartoons. And this is from a channel called Rob the Wonderful. I've never seen his content before watching these videos, and frankly, he seems like a really cool guy. I'm going to be honest, I actually agree with a large majority of what he says in these two videos, but I'm still going to have my comments here and there to say. And there's a couple of things that I do disagree with, too. So, let's jump into it. Here we go. Top five shows that everybody... Okay, maybe not everybody, but most people like and I don't. Alright, so as you can see, very similar theme to what I did with Phantom Strider last. So, we're going to start with the ones he hates that everyone likes, and then go to the reverse of that. So, before I begin, I should mention, I don't hate any of these shows. There you go, he's saying he doesn't necessarily hate any of these shows, he just thinks that they're overrated. Kind of the same thing that Phantom Strider did in some cases, although Phantom Strider did actually hate quite a few of the ones he talked about. I'm, I promise you, this is going to have more than just comparisons to Phantom Strider, that's not what I'm all about here. Number five, Doug. I'm going to be honest honest with you, I didn't watch that much Doug growing up. As a kid, I kind of liked it, but it's not really something I got super into, and it's not something I'm super passionate about. So before I go on, I should mention that I've only seen the Nickelodeon Doug. I have never watched the Disney Doug. Uh, and ironically, I'm the inverse of that. I've only seen the Disney Doug, not the Nickelodeon one. I was so disinterested in the show, I didn't even know Disney acquired it. Yeah, in all honesty, this show doesn't exactly pique my interest either. Um... I've mentioned before that I don't like shows about school. Um, I just don't find them interesting at all. I could see that. It depends for me. Because if it's something like Ned's Declassified, I really loved it. So it just depends on the show for me. And I think Doug kind of epitomizes everything I dislike about shows about school. Because when you do shows about school, it's just... It's never interesting. It's always the same kinds of things. It's yeah, I see what he means there. Again, a lot of this is going to be me agreeing with him, so I may cut some of the Doug part out because I think I've got my point across that we're mostly in agreement on Doug. I'm kind of indifferent to it myself. For four, and oh boy, this one's not going to win me any friends. SpongeBob. Well, this is going to be a hard disagree, uh, so let's get into this one. Shout out to Andy Kishore. <laughs> so, SpongeBob. Oh boy. Um... This is like one of the most popular shows ever, and I just don't get it. Well, I'll tell you. SpongeBob has a lot of good workplace humor, a lot of clever gags that both children and adults can enjoy. A lot of the humor I actually enjoy more as an adult than I did as a child. Um, it's got a lot of clever commentary, but it's not preachy. It doesn't tackle, like, real-world problems, really. It has good characters that are all very entertaining and fun to watch. Um, and the interesting thing about SpongeBob is I think a lot of people, when they're watching it as a kid, have the more SpongeBob mentality, whereas when they get older, they have the more Squidward mentality. And I think that that dichotomy of the different character dynamics is what really makes the show work and it makes it so clever and intelligent and fun See? i mean um i have watched it often and a lot of people keep saying like you know the earlier episodes are better than the later episodes or you know people seem to have their favorite season of spongebob that they really like um i will say that i have watched um episodes from various points in its lifetime and at best, I think it's okay. I kind of, I disagree wholeheartedly with that, because I think Spongebob is a huge cultural phenomenon. It kind of shaped a generation. It's like one of the few shows that I know that every single person I ever talked to has seen and enjoyed. And on the subject of some seasons being better than others, I tend to give more credit to the bad seasons, quote-unquote, and I actually enjoy a lot of them. Not as much as the good seasons, but I do feel like the show is still pretty solid. I do feel like it had a low patch uh, for about you know, five or six seasons there in the middle. Uh, but uh, I do think it has recovered slightly. Uh, I haven't watched it since Hillenberg's death, admittedly, so I don't know if it's gone downhill again since then. But up until that point, I've enjoyed it. This show, to me, just does not deserve the worldwide cultural phenomenon status that it's achieved. And... Wow, I just, I just don't really get it. I understand not personally getting it, but I definitely think it deserves the cultural phenomenon it has because the show, like I said, itself defined a generation. It was something that all of us grew up on and it was very important to us as kids. How the hell does it keep going? Do you know how many better shows have come and gone within that lifetime? Well, to talk about better shows is very subjective, and I will say that there are a lot of great shows that have come and gone in the time SpongeBob has been going, uh, but I'd also say that a lot of shows that come and go tend to be better. 
bad, but again, it's all subjective, so I can't really say for sure, um, you know, what's good or bad with shows, but I do get what he's saying. There are a lot of great shows that have kind of been given the boot because of SpongeBob, especially on Nickelodeon, uh, because Nickelodeon does have this habit to just rerun a bunch of old SpongeBob rather than showing new content. At least it did last time I checked. I haven't watched Nickelodeon in years, so forgive me if I'm wrong. Number three, and I am not apologizing for this one. Code Lyoko. I'm not gonna go too much into this one. I do kind of agree with him on this one, too. Code Lyoko is a show I used to watch pretty heavily, and I do still like certain elements of it. Um, and it's one of those shows that I feel like the earlier seasons of Code Lyoko were actually pretty entertaining, but then it went massively downhill after Aelita came out of the computer. That's when I feel like the show jumped the shark and I stopped watching. And he does make a point that Code Lyoko is very confusing and poorly written, and I'd have to wholeheartedly agree. Even in the earlier seasons, it's hard to make sense of what the fuck is going on. Number two, Drawn Together. Oh god, here's where we start getting into the hate. This is interesting, because Phantom Strider really likes this show, and I actually don't like it. I haven't watched it in a while, mind you. Uh, but I watched it when I was a kid, and I really liked it back then. Uh, but then as I watched it when I was older, I just felt like it was trying way too hard to be edgy. Um, but I haven't watched it in years. I might give it another go at some point. But yeah, I'm kind of in agreement with Rob on this one. It's pretty bad. And it could have worked. It really could have been interesting. But it's so painfully not funny. There were and again, I'd have to agree, based on going back and re-watching parts of it maybe five, six years ago, and granted, admittedly, my personality has drastically changed since five, six years ago, so I don't know if I still feel that way about it, but that was kind of the impression I got when I re-watched it. It was also one of those shows that relied a lot on shock humor. It would go out of its way to be as edgy and offensive as possible. See, the edginess, again, that's something I wholeheartedly agree with. That's just the only thing I could take away from it when I tried to rewatch it a few years back. I'm obviously not above edgy humor. I love edgy humor, but it has to be funny to be humor, you know what I mean? Number one. This was a show that I didn't start out hating, but it's one of those shows that sticks around so long you begin to hate it. Number one is Family Guy. Now, this is absolutely fucking ironic because I loved Family Guy coming out. I absolutely did. Then I went through this phase of hating it for a few years. And I am back at the point now, re-watching it. I just finished re-watching the first ten seasons of Family Guy. And I fucking loved it again. And I'm also watching the Cleveland show right now, so I fucking love Family Guy. I don't watch, like, anything past, like, season 13. Whichever one Life of Brian was in, I think it was season 13, it might have been season 12. But admittedly, there are still some jokes I see in clip compilations from newer episodes, particularly Quagmire jokes, that I still find funny. The show has been going on for a very long time. Um, when it first premiered, I actually thought it was kind of funny, but then it was cancelled, and honestly, I didn't even know it was cancelled. Uh, but then it came back, and then it was cancelled again, and then it came back. And it seems that every year that goes by... The show just keeps getting progressively worse and worse. See, I am kind of with him on this, too. Even though I do love Family Guy, uh, I do think that it does get worse and worse. And like I said, I haven't watched really that much after Life of Brian uh, because the, sh show, the show has been on a downward spiral. I will fully admit that. But I've, I've loved the first ten seasons, and I haven't had that many problems with it. There's been a few jokes I haven't liked. There's been a lot of things that I've personally considered in bad taste. But ultimately, I've enjoyed the show as a whole. The characters in this show have just degenerated into some of the worst ever. They are, they're hateful, they're abusive, they have mental problems, and it's to the point where it's not even funny anymore. It's more like, these people need to seek some help. See, that's a common criticism of Family Guy. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit here because this isn't exactly what he said, but I feel like this is kind of what he was hinting at. That the show itself is very cruel and mean-spirited, and a lot of the characters just do horrible, horrible things. Um, but admittedly, that's been part of kind of the draw of it for me lately. Um, because everything's been so sanitized and pussified for the last few years that I'm just tired of it. And seeing something as over-the-top edgy, offensive, and malicious as Family Guy has been kind of refreshing. Like I said, there's been one or two jokes that I think have gone in my opinion too far um, because I think that they're kind of distasteful and that's particularly when they joke about real things that happen to real people but I'm not gonna go and say that that's not something you can do because I think all jokes are allowed there is nothing I am offended by per se I can just recognize when something is bad taste kind of do a little bit of a double take and go ooh I don't know about that but overall I've still enjoyed the show despite all that in fact in in because of that in some cases because it's refreshing even if it's a little bit malicious it can be refreshing for me not to mention the jokes have gone stale they keep reusing ideas 
You know, premises of episodes are offensive. And the show has always been offensive. That doesn't bother me. The offensive humor is part of what I like about it, but I do agree they have reused a lot of shit and run a lot of jokes into the ground. I'll tell you what the worst Family Guy joke in my opinion is. It's that one where Peter would go, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Conway Twitty, and then they play like fucking two minutes of Conway Twitty singing. I hate that. That joke has never been funny. Uh, but I don't care that it's offensive. The show can be as offensive as it wants. That can be fun. And here's the thing. There's been many episodes of the show that have premises that I completely disagree with. I don't agree with a lot of the politics that gets put in certain episodes. I'm not going to name which ones, because that's not what this is about. But the point is, I can still enjoy those episodes, even if I wholeheartedly disagree with what Seth MacFarlane was getting at. It's sad, because Family Guy can do good things. I like the episodes that focus on Stewie and Brian, when they're on a road trip together, or the one where they were uh, trapped in the bank vault. That was a really good episode. Hell yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. Like, everyone likes the Road 2 episodes, myself included. Those are some of the best episodes of the show. But I'm glad that he likes the episode Brian and Stewie when they're trapped in the bank vault. Because believe it or not, that episode is really hated for some reason. I fucking love that episode. It has some of the best character development in the show. I don't get why it's hated, so I'm glad that someone else can appreciate the episode Brian and Stewie. Um, and then there was the, uh, murder mystery episode where they were all at the mansion. Hey, this guy has good taste. That episode's fucking fantastic. That episode being, uh, and then there were fewer. I love that episode, so there you go. Which, by the way, didn't have any cutaway gags, and maybe, uh, maybe the show should just stop relying on those. I do kind of agree the cutaway gags can be pretty bad. I do think they are kind of what makes the show itself, though. They are kind of what made it stand out from other comedy. But I do agree that they can be overbearing, and maybe the show shouldn't rely on them so much. For instance, the Cleveland show still had cutaway gags, but not as much. They still had a decent amount, mind you, but they did kind of cut back on it in the Cleveland show, which is part of why I appreciate the Cleveland so show so much. A lot of people don't like the Cleveland show. I do. But that's not what we're talking about. That's a tangent. I know it's very easy to pick on Family Guy, but... It's garnered so much hate from so many different sources. The South Park crew hates it. The Simpsons crew hates it. Even Seth MacFarlane said he was done with the show for a while. And you know what? I like Seth MacFarlane. I think he can be funny. I've seen him on the Comedy Central roast. But it's just Family Guy is done as far as I'm concerned. It's not, it's not funny anymore. It's just on TV and we're just kind of waiting for it to finally die. And with that note, I do agree as well. I do think the show should just end as much as I think The Simpsons should just end. In fact, I'd rather watch Modern Family Guy than Modern Simpsons uh, because The Simpsons has gotten that bad. But yes, I do think that Family Guy should end as well, especially with voice actors stepping down, which I don't personally agree with, but that's a whole other thing, a whole other issue. Anyway, let's move on to his next video, the ones that he likes that everyone hates. These are the five shows that everyone hates, or at least most people hate, but I don't. These are shows that I feel maybe don't get the credit they deserve or um, are kind of underappreciated or, in the case of number five, uh, get a lot of hate that I really don't feel they deserve. So yeah, once again, he doesn't absolutely love these shows, but he thinks they're underrated, which I can respect because... I have plenty of shows like that myself. Number five, Uncle Grandpa. Yeah, I'm gonna have to disagree. That show's fucking disgusting, terrible, and just as awful to look at, isn't funny, and is just bad. Um, I think maybe he might be right about it getting maybe more hate than it deserves, but I'm one of those people who hates on it, so I don't know uh, if I can really give it any credit, because it's just fucking awful. Modern Cartoon Network is terrible, in my opinion. Uh, the last good show they had was Regular Show, um, and it ended, so... That, that's just my opinion. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to defend this show. Boy, we're off to a good start already. All right. Um, this show gets an excessive amount of hate. And at first, I can kind of see why, because it is a bit of a weird show. I mean, the, the title itself is completely strange. But um, have any of you actually watched it? That's a fair point. I haven't watched a ton of it. I haven't even watched a full episode, but I have seen little bits and pieces of it on TV when, like, my little cousins were watching it at my grandma's house from time to time. It's kind of interesting. The show is very fascinatingly surreal. It's got this, um, look and this style and... Let me stop you right there. The look and style is exactly the same for every fucking Cartoon Network show there is these days. Even Universe, Uncle Grandpa, Powerpuff Girls Reboot, uh, Thundercats Roar, Teen Titans Go, they all use what's known as the Cal Arts style, and they're all, like, too fucking samey for me to say that the style is anything unique on any of them. Um, it has kind of a, a, a heart to it, because Uncle Grandpa's a character who helps kids out with their problems. So, 
Where's all the hate coming from? Just because a character is good and sweet and likes to help people doesn't make them a well-written character. It doesn't make them a likable character, and it doesn't make them fun. Uh, if anything, sometimes that can make them very uninteresting and boring. Uh, for instance, that's the problem a lot of people have with Jonathan Joestar. Um, and I love Jonathan Joestar, I'm not trying to say that I feel that way. But that's part of why Part 1 doesn't get a lot of credit, right? Because Jonathan Joestar is just a good boy trademark, there is no other personality to him. So I can see why people don't like him, even though I really do like the character. So, with that in mind, I also don't think that Uncle Grandpa would necessarily be a good character just because he's a good boy trademark. In the first episode, there was a kid who didn't like the fact that he was fat, and through uh, Uncle Grandpa's weird series of events, uh, he taught him that it's not so bad. You can be comfortable with who you are. While I do agree wholeheartedly with that sentiment of being comfortable with who you are, I also do think that people should always strive to self-improve. I think to just be accept to just accept mediocrity and to just accept being, you know, not your best isn't exactly a healthy mindset. I do think you should ultimately be comfortable with who you are and accept yourself and understand and accept your flaws, but still intend to overcome those flaws, you know what I mean? Like, I'm always looking to self-improve myself because, let's face it, none of us are perfect. Um, that said, I do understand, you know, the idea of being comfortable with who you are and I don't think that's a bad message. I just think that it's dangerous to never want to improve. Oh, and to anybody who complained about the crossover with Steven Universe, shut up! That was hilarious! I wouldn't complain about that because I hate both shows equally. In fact, I think I hate Steven Universe more than I hate Uncle Grandpa, so fight me. Number four is a tie between The Cleveland Show and American Dad. Yes, exactly. I completely 100% agree. The Cleveland Show and American Dad are both heavily underrated. Very good Seth MacFarlane shows, in my opinion, both potentially better than Family Guy. Yeah, two Seth MacFarlane shows, because... Um, in my last list, I mentioned that I did not like Family Guy, and uh, I feel that where Family Guy has failed miserably, um, American Dad and The Cleveland Show succeeded. American Dad originally started out as the show that was just making fun of Republicans. It's like, oh, they're Republicans, lol. But over the years, it's evolved into this bizarre, fascinating, pretty hilarious uh completely different show than what it originally was. Couldn't agree more. American Dad is a genius show and in my opinion Seth MacFarlane's best show. I mean the conservative humor is still there but there are so many bizarre things about this show that I, I can't help but kind of love it because uh, strange things would happen like there was an episode where they were fighting this possessed hot tub. And exactly. I love the surrealist humor in it. And then there's the Cleveland show which of all the Seth MacFarlane shows um, have the best family dynamic. I absolutely 100% agree. I, I fucking love The Cleveland Show, and I'm glad someone else is saying this, because The Cleveland Show is amazing. And the characters interacting with each other, they're just so natural and realistic. I mean, despite some of the weird oddball stuff, you know, like the flying tigers and Komodo dragons and shit. But overall, I think as people, they're believable. A lot of these animated family shows, they're supposed to, you know, uh, work together and work well off each other and persevere through problems. And they do that. I, I really believe in them as a family. Exactly. I 100% agree. They are a very believable family. And that's kind of the... Isn't that kind of the point of these shows originally? Like, The Simpsons kind of started it in the 80s and early 90s. It's a shame that The Cleveland Show got canceled, but I think that and American Dad are proof that Seth MacFarlane shows can work. Once again, absolutely. I wholeheartedly agree. Number three, Total Drama Island. The first season. Once again, I wholeheartedly agree. The first season of Total Drama was in was enjoyable as all hell. I'll even say the second season was pretty decent. After that, not so much. It just kept going and going and going and having new cast of characters and getting worse and worse. But the first season, love it. Absolutely agree. What? Then they ended up getting rid of Chris, which was a huge mistake. What the fuck? Chris was like the best character in the show throughout all of the seasons. So yeah, I agree. That is a huge mistake. Number two, Beware the Batman. I have never seen this show, so I'm actually not going to comment on this one. So there you go. If anyone has seen it, there you go. There's number two. Number one is The Legend of Korra. I'm gonna have to soft disagree with you here. I think the earlier parts of Korra were pretty good, and I don't think the show was necessarily ever terrible, um, but I feel like a lot of the writing was really bad. Korra herself as a character just wasn't that likable um, because she never really went through any actual character arc. Um, the villain for season one was really cool, but then they turned him into a total bitch. So I'm gonna have to disagree. I don't like The Legend of Korra. It's pretty bad. So... 
I kind of can see where some of the hate came from because, um, first of all, this show was not supposed to go past season one, but it became so popular that um, they were forced to do three more seasons, and they weren't really prepared to do that, so things got a little messy. And that's a fair point. I do think that uh, being unprepared can make writing bad, but... I think that the first season itself already wasn't that great. Other than the villain, none of the characters were really that likable to me, and then they went and ruined the villain in season two, so there you go. Just the look of this series is amazing. I I'll give him that. The show is aesthetically pleasing. It looks really nice, so I'll give him that. But on the other hand, it's coming off the coattails of Avatar and just continuing up with that style. Granted, there are some, you know, changes in setting and things like that to make it more steampunky and whatnot, but for the most part, it's the Avatar style. Not to mention the show gave us a bisexual couple. So what? That doesn't fucking matter. Like, I, I'm not against it. I'm just saying that doesn't fucking matter. That's not like a, oh, yeah, that's good. That makes it good. No, you're not going to score points from me just for having that. Um, and I think it was poorly written, too, because they very much did not build up their relationship. They were kind of adversarial towards each other. And really, it would have made more sense had she ended up with the other guy. So, no, I don't agree with it. Had they had more buildup, sure, that would have been fine. But as far as I'm concerned, the goods vastly outweigh the bads. Well, and obviously that's a matter of subjectivity. I completely disagree. I think the bads vastly outweigh the goods, but hey, that's not that bad of a take, I suppose. Um, I don't think the bisexual thing really matters. I think when people think it does matter is when you get a lot of tokenism and a lot of people who create stuff just to be able to say, oh, look, we got this. Look, we got one. Uh, gotta catch them all. But um, overall, I think that Rob the Wonderful's videos are pretty good. Uh, I agree with him for the most part, and uh, it's great that this was uh, recommended to me. I was glad to do this response. I'm not as negative with him as I was with Phantom Strider, um, and I think Rob did a good job with these videos. So, uh, good job, Rob. Uh, if by some chance you see this, good for you. You did you did good. Um, but yeah, anyway, this has been Fugitive Red Eye with another Red Eye response. Uh, toodle.